How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be checking out a Bolin's Articulator. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today we're looking at this super cool riding lawnmower here. This is a Bolin's Articulator. So it pivots right in the center there. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how that mechanism works in a little bit. But first we're just gonna do a brief overview of this machine. So again, it's a Bolin's Articulator and this is a model FS966. Now the 966 model has a hydrostatic transmission in the back. So it has the foot pedal for forwards and reverse. Super cool machine here. All previous models before this one had what I believe was a five speed transmission that you could manually select. And this particular 966 model was manufactured from 1991 to 1993. Now from the research that I did, Bolin's there was purchased by MTD in about 2001. However, after speaking with my rep to try to source some parts for this unit, I learned that MTD does not sell parts for this. You have to go through a company called ESF Direct, and that's based out of Quebec here in Canada. They are the only licensed place from what I could tell that sells Stiga parts, and Stiga is a Swedish company. So this thing was imported into Canada straight from Sweden. This unit has a 42 inch deck that you can obviously see is mounted to the front. So you can adjust the height from that lever there and the deck engages and disengages right there. Now this is a side discharge. I'm sure you could set this up for mulching. I know because this is near zero turn, a lot of golf courses would probably be interested in something like this. And just for reference, the model number for the mower deck is right there. That's going to be the sticker that covers all of the parts needed for the mower deck because these machines do take attachments. So unlike a typical riding lawnmower where you would get the model number off of the machine, you need the specific model number off of your attachment to get those specific parts. Now it does have this back cover here that you can remove simply by disconnecting these little rubber straps that hold it down. There's gonna be one at the front there and then there's two at the back. One of them here is broken, but the other one you can see just holds on by those little tabs they have. So I'll pull this cover off and show you guys the engine. So with the rear cover off there, it exposes the Briggs & Stratton V-twin engine. This is going to be a 16 horsepower Vanguard and this particular machine came into the shop for basic carb clean. The main jet was kind of gummed up and it also wasn't charging the battery. So we ended up having to replace the voltage regulator there. And then I redid the wiring because some of the wiring was being melted by the exhaust tube right there. So I wrapped the wiring harness with some heat resistant tape, then wired up the voltage regulator charge wire to the battery positive side here on the solenoid. So now when you run this thing, it charges the battery up to about 14.3 volts. Today's video is more or less just a simple overview of this pretty unique riding mower here. I've never had the chance to work on one. This is the first time I've ever seen one in person. So I wanted to share this with you guys because what a cool machine it was. You saw me driving around there on the driveway a little bit earlier and that goes back to this cool articulator that they have right in the center. So this whole thing pivots right on this and it is cable driven. So when you steer, let's say to the right, this side tensions and that side gets some slack on that cable. Now once it gets to that really tight turn position, if you let go of the steering wheel, it does want to return on its own. So when I took the thumbnail for this photo, you may have seen that I used a little brick on the tires there to essentially act as a wheel chalk to hold this thing into that tight position so that I could get that cool thumbnail for you guys. Now from what I can tell, the mower deck has three spindles here. So I'm assuming that there's going to be three different blades that attach to this thing. And again, this one's set up for side discharge, has a little headlight here. That's your brake lever over there. You can adjust your seat. This one's really cool, check this out. 
So if you're a thin guy, you want to move that to the left, but if you're a little chubbier, you want to turn that to the right to position the seat back. So as you guys could probably see in this video, I was really pushed up a little bit too far forward, but I don't want to adjust the seat because that is where my customer had it. So I showed you guys the model number for the mower deck. The model number for the machine is back here and it is a 966. There is the serial number if you guys can see that. And as you can see, made in Sweden. Everything right here is in Swedish, as was the IPL or the illustrated parts listing when I tried to pull up a manual for this thing to try to find info on some parts. Almost everything was in Swedish. And from what my customer told me, this engine is not actually the factory installed engine. The exhaust tubing on this side has been cut and welded at a 90 degree angle, which you really don't want to do. But this thing now, after it's had the carb cleaned and some fresh 91 octane ethanol free fuel in it starts up and runs nice and smooth. So I just wanted to do this quick fire video on this super cool machine that you hardly see any of these here in Canada. Again, ESF out of Quebec, you'll be able to get parts through them. I'll leave a link in the description down below just in case anyone's in Canada and wants to contact them for parts for these machines. So for example, when this came in, the choke lever wasn't working and we thought maybe the cable was seized and needed to be replaced. Turns out that the little 5 16 screw there that holds the cable conduit onto the bracket was a little too tight and wasn't letting the cable move. So now the choke works perfectly fine on this. As you guys saw, it was running perfect. And because this rear cover is removable, you have just tons of room to work on this thing. You can kind of get in anywhere you need to, except for getting the air filter on and off. That gets a little tricky. That's held in by some 10 millimeter nuts and bolts there, especially to get that carb off. But I was able to do it without removing any of the fuel tank or the battery box back there. And uh, yeah, this was just a quick little main jet clean out. I ended up ultrasonic cleaning the carburetor. Didn't have to replace any parts the fuel pump and everything else worked fine and yeah super cool machine so a big shout out to my buddy chris for letting me work on this thing i gotta load it up on my trailer and get it out of here because the weather network is forecasting a big winter storm coming tomorrow and i do not have the shed space to keep this thing for a week or a week and a half i'm gonna need that space for snow blowers Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. As I said, it was just a quick little overview before I delivered that piece of equipment there, but a super cool riding lawnmower that I definitely wanted to share with you guys because not only is it the first time I've ever worked on one, but it's the first time I've ever seen one in Southern Ontario, Canada. So I thought it would be a good little video to share with you guys. And if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.